Very nice work there, people. Very nice work indeed. Oh, thank you so much. Your advice was very helpful. Well, it's like I tell every adult movie star. If you're going to suck, suck all the way. <laughs> it was an honor working with you, sir. I've never seen such brilliant direction. Well, what can I say? I know how to keep them coming. Who was that ingeniously perverted man? That was Michael Bay, the most brilliant porn director the world has ever known. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Michael! It's Peter! Peter! So, good news? Good news, buddy. We decided to let you direct Bad Boys. If all goes well, we might have a few other films lined up for you, too. They see potential in you, kid. Keep it up. You might just be one of the biggest action directors of all time. Oh. Well, that's great, Peter. That's great. And what's the matter? I thought you'd be more excited. Oh, oh, I am, Peter. I am. But, uh... I just don't know if I always want to be associated with action. Well, what did you have in mind? Well, I always wanted to do... a romance. so you don't have to. Years ago, a disaster fell upon this nation. A horrible tragedy that left good people and their families scarred for life. And while many weren't there to witness it, this attack on the public left several poor souls confused and afraid. And I think we can all agree, it's a bombing we will never forget and will hold deep within our heart. Okay, you know the punchline. It's Pearl Harbor the movie, not the actual event. Some of you may find it kind of cold of me to make a joke around that, but if Michael Bay can make up insulting shit about Pearl Harbor, well then, so can I. This dumbass flick trying to cash in on the romantic historical fiction based around a tragedy genre, which sad to say is quite a popular genre, is an obvious studio choice to try and get out a butch version of Titanic. Because hey, if the highest grossing film at that time got its profit from teary-eyed women, naturally we can make more marketing to testosterone-filled man-penis. The problem is, it's over three hours long, has no action until the middle, and is under the misconception that Ben Affleck is likable. And seeing how this is still the month of love... <laughs> I say we get snuggly with the most romantic person we can think of, Michael Bay. Let's awaken the sleeping giant with Pearl Harbor. We open with two boys on a farm pretending to be pilots when one of their dads comes in from his job. I get the front! No, you take the back! <laughs> Oh, what do you know? It's one of those one-button push planes. He was a piloting school my ass, flying this thing's as easy as flushing a toilet. We flew! We flew! Yes, I'm a pilot! But Father jerking everything I'm in is not happy and starts beating his son, only to have his friend knock him out. I will bust you open, you dirty German! I fought the Germans in France. I pray to God no one ever has to see the things that I saw. We are so lost. No, we're not. We're not going anywhere. Yes, we are. We have no direction at all. Yes, we do. Told you we weren't going anywhere. Blow me. Cut to years later where those two boys have grown up into some wild, crazy rapscallions who love putting priceless military aircraft in jeopardy. Maverick! 
Those farm boys are grounded. Yes, sir. An entirely unacceptable use of military aircraft, sir. Oi, Stutter. It's my thing. It's a quick way to identify me without having to give me any character. Get those hedgehoppers in Doolittle's office. Our heroes are played by Ben Affleck, pre-director days, so you can hate him all you want, and Josh Hartnett, who if his eyes were any more squinty, would have to see through his eyelids. They're under the command of Colonel Doolittle, played by Alec Baldwin, pre-I had too much pie, but not post I need to seriously stop eating the goddamn pie. It's ironic because he plays a person based on a real-life colonel, and yet he's probably the most cliché character in the entire movie. That's not training, Macaulay, that's a stunt. And I personally consider it to be reckless and irresponsible. I was doing it to try to inspire the men, sir, in the way that you've inspired me. I believe the French even have a word for that, when the men get together to honor their leaders. They call it an homage, sir. A what? Don't throw your million-dollar words around me! What complicated French phrases are next? Baguette? Clisson? Gerard Depardieu? An homage, sir. That's bullshit, Macaulay! <laughs> everybody. But it's very good bullshit. Thanks, sir. Yeah, we like these privates that don't follow commands and endanger their lives and equipment. We need more people like you not doing what we tell you to do. It's like the old saying goes, be all that you can be and do uh, whatever you want. We're flexible. Oh, man, I am one good looking son of a bitch. So seeing how Michael Bay's forecast calls for permanent sunsets, it's probably best that we cut to the next night. Oh, and here's a fun game. Count how many times they giggle throughout this entire scene. If the Call of Duty means seeing 150 men in their underwear every day, we are here to serve. <laughs> you know what they're doing where I come from? Cow tipping. <laughs> so you join the Navy. We're Navy nurses, not tourists. I joined to do my patriotic duty. And to me, guys. Austin. He was getting fresh, so I poked him again. <laughs> Oh, by the way, hi, Jennifer Garner. Yeah, that's really her before she became famous. God, I wish you and these brainless bimbos were all just aliases for your next undercover mission. You gotta tell them the story, Evelyn. Well, it was about four weeks ago. So Hartnett tries to help Affleck cheat the physical so he can pass and join the military, but Kate catches on and calls him on it. But Army and Navy requires 20-20 vision. Oh, I, I it's, it's, it's not a problem with my eyes. I mean, I, I can see. It's just letters. I mix them up sometimes, that's all. I mean, I just get them backwards sometimes. Well, I felt so bad. I had no choice. I passed him. <laughs> well, I guess it's nice that she passes dyslexic doofuses, putting most likely several other soldiers at risk in critical times. But all I want to know is, if he constantly gets letters and numbers backwards all the time, then how the hell did he read the cheat sheet? Dipshit, just imagine those letters are up on the board! Because guess what? They are up on the board! Maybe we could celebrate. Celebrate what? Well, you being my hero. One. They of course start chatting and start up a romance, but is it me or does it sound like Lucas took over some of this romantic banter here? You are so beautiful, it hurts. It's your nose that hurts. Oh, I think it's my heart. You're so beautiful. It's only because I'm so in love. No, it's because I'm so in love with you. So love has blinded you? Maybe Lucas' a screen alias is Randall Wallace. Wouldn't that explain so much? So they spend days and days together until we come to this tired story thread. The fact that he's leaving the next day and is only now telling her about it. But I'm going to the war. Tomorrow, flying with the Eagle Squadron. You're in the U.S. Army. How could they order you to go? I volunteered. I passed you. Now you volunteer for the most dangerous place you can go? It's not your responsibility. It's not your choice. Yeah, we're just a couple. It's not like you have any say in things. It's like Rosie the Riveter says, men call all the shots. Or was it something else? No, 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 that was it. But at least they have one last romantic evening alone to get or... See, I can't do this. I mean, I, I, mean, I can. I, I, I want to. I don't want you to have anything about tonight that you regret. If I had one more night to live, I'd want to spend it with you. See, that's what I want to come home to. I want to know the best part of my life still ahead of me. So the promise of sex will bring you home? Okay, fair enough. But you're still gonna have that lust whether you're with her tonight or not. Why buy the cow, man? Or deny the cow sex, however the phrase goes. So he tells her not to see him off at the train station, but yeah, get a load of this great logic. It's my test. <clears throat> if I tell her not to come and she comes anyway, then I'm... 
I know she loves me. Okay, dude, you kept that you're leaving a secret, sprung it on her the night before, say she has no choice in the matter, or deny her nookie, and you have the bull testicles to be testing her? What the hell do you do for an encore? Tell orphans that they're seeing Santa's workshop, but it's really a war zone and the ones who didn't plug their ears get a cookie? Christ, how close are those Japanese planes again? Evelyn! Evelyn! She loves me. I totally made my girlfriend who I treat badly cry. Feeling the douche. So while Kate and her friends are off to be nurses. Welcome ladies. Hi. Hi. Oh, don't you mean <laughs> <laughs> Affleck spends time in fighter jets while also writing his supposed true love. Family. Girl, sir. The girl. A lot of people frown on the Yanks for not being in this war yet. I'd just like to say, if there are many more back home like you, God help anyone who goes to war with America. Oh, yeah, another thing about this movie, if it could jerk off America's wang anymore, it'd probably get dick sauce on Cuba. Oh, but meanwhile, our Japanese enemies plot their surprise attack, led by God on high, treasure to the entire world and whatever parts of the universe are left undiscovered, Mako. Oh. Well, Pearl Harbor is too shallow for an aerial torpedo attack, and we're surrounded by subnets. Distance is our ally, Admiral. You analysts got it all figured out, don't you? A smart enemy gets you exactly where you think you're safe. Yes, the smart enemy plots in giant hot tubs with toy battleships that have no markings on it that would identify it as a map. Not, of course, forgetting Rubber Ducky Godzilla. <laughs> oh, Rubber Ducky Godzilla! Rubber Ducky Godzilla! Rubber Ducky Godzilla! Oh! Actually, I have to admit, I'm kind of shocked. We're about 45 minutes in and there's been no explosions, all character development, even if it's bad development, and even the Asians are shown in non-stereotypical ways. Almost like Michael Bay was a different guy. Still a bad director, but a different guy. You almost gotta wonder what was going through his head at the time. Peter, did you see the news about Armageddon? No, but I've seen the critical feedback. Maybe there wasn't much this Bay kid as I thought. Actually, according to these recent box office results, it's already made 36 million. How can that be? Everyone said it was crap. And yet it's still made a spectacular amount of money. No film has ever gotten this much hatred and yet earned so much. Maybe this Michael Bay guy is onto something. Maybe he's a wonderkin. He's a miracle. Some are even calling him the son of Schlock. Hey, Hosanna! The Chosen One has come! just been the best roommates a man can have. Not only have you been there to help me shoot all my adult films, but you've also been supportive and I can't help but feel you've had an impact on the way I view the world. Man, that'd be dope. Tina A, in this rough, brutal world that we live in, you've shown me all that women are capable of. It was a pleasure to serve you, Mr. Bay. And Dog Johnson, you've taught me what it means to keep it real and never conform to the white man stereotype. Bitch, we be keeping a hissy wissy in the pussy man. Indeed. I want you both to know that even though I'm moving away to make bigger and better films, I will one day represent each of you in the way you've had an impact on me. So what now, G? You keeping it hopping and popping up in the hood? Oh, dog, whatever you just said. No. They finally asked me to make the ultimate romance epic that I've always wanted to make, Pearl Harbor. 
Farewell, my friends. That little bitch is gonna be all right. He sure is, dog. What you own, bitch? <laughs> Like takes a hit by enemy planes and is believed to be dead. Hartnett goes to deliver the bad news. No, yeah, I'm sure he's really gone. That's why the advertisements show him in about 20 more scenes that he wasn't in yet. Hey, while we're at it, I get the feeling Aragorn will make it through the two towers also. So Hartnett and Beckinsale tried to deal with their laws of AFLAC! They volunteered to go to England. Volunteered? He told me he'd been assigned. Someone was trying to protect me. Yeah, that is so like him to protect his buddy. God, I feel like you two have shared so much in the... two, maybe three scenes you had together. You know, the ones that never went over five fucking minutes. Oh, and speaking of which, did protecting you also include playing chicken with expensive aircrafts? Putting your life and your professional career in danger? Well, at least it was worth it to 86 his girlfriend and leave her nether regions colder than a snowman's rectal thermometer. You know, I gotta admit, from an outsider looking in, I think it's pretty obvious that dear old Affleck is a dear old asshole. How close are those planes again? So, we've had one romance, yes. What about sick and romance? Hey, we got a visitor. I'm falling for. Three months later, Kate decides to go to the military base in her finest evening dress to uh, not hit on Hartnett, Maybe. but somehow ends up flying with him with her in his lap anyway. Yeah, I'm sure that was sanctioned. Hey Sarge, I'm gonna take my girlfriend up into the air with her in my lap even though the seatbelt can't fit around us. Okay, just be back by 12. My kids are gonna drive the submarine tomorrow. So after their joyride, he takes her into one of the hangars to see if his parachute will still deploy. Dan Aykroyd, yeah, you heard right, Dan Aykroyd, making his biggest appearance since Temple of Doom, alerts of a possible oncoming attack. When I was in the Asiatic fleet, the locals used to try to get outside of a problem, to try to see the inside. A blow to Pearl would devastate the Pacific fleet's ability to make war. Just like the symmetrical book stacking of the Philadelphia mass turbulence of 1947. Actually, the funny thing is, Aykroyd might be one of the best parts of the movie. I mean, whether you like him as an actor or not, you have to admit, he is the king of exposition. Anytime he's explaining something, you will always listen. It's like playing chess in the dark. Any rumor, troop movement, ship movement, spine tingle, goosebump, we pay attention to it. Hell, I could probably take the Dark Knight more seriously if Ackray was doing his voice. As a duly designated representative of the city, I order you to cease any and all supernatural activity and return forthwith to your place of origin or to the nearest convenient parallel dimension. Huh? It's all good, because Team Josh seems to be just as happy as can be with Affleck's leftovers. Every moment we're not together, you're up there training for it. Yeah, well, I'm training for moments like these. Oh, well, now, that's very interesting. It's very interesting, because uh, we have somebody backstage uh, who would like to comment on this whole thing. Uh, can we bring him out here, please? Uh, uh, can we bring him out? Oh! That's right, Affleck just pops out of nowhere! He was gonna call eventually, but if you haven't noticed, he likes to spring dramatic bullshit at the very last minute. I got picked up by a French fishing boat and I, I was in occupied France and I couldn't get word out. But in the middle of their reunion... <laughs> Rafe. Oh, I was just keeping her warm for you. <laughs> Try 
Time to fix this problem, let's go get hammered. And while we're at it, let's throw some dick remarks at the people you thought you were helping, but you were really just being a cock horse to. Y'all know Danny was even good enough to look out for my girl for me while I was gone. We thought you were dead, Rafe. Life is good, ain't it, man? You left her to fight somebody else's war. Yeah, he's only been back for ten minutes, and already I hate him. When you were gone, it's the loneliest I'd ever been. Same for her, too. If you hadn't gone, none of this would have happened. So it's my fault, I guess. No, oh, I don't know. You volunteered, you left her behind, you tried to control his life. Let's see what the Magic 8-Ball has to say. Can't argue with that. Things can be right between me and you. I just don't see how it can ever be the same. So, how close are those planes again? I go now to fulfill my mission and my destiny. I hope it is a destiny that will bring honor to our family. Ooh, might be closer than I thought. They're writing letters to their Japanese relatives in English. To throw the enemy off? So, just a mere hour and a half in, we finally get our attack on the harbor. Rather than just let the terror of the attack speak for itself, let's fly by every poetic symbol of American innocence we can find. All your base are belong to us. <laughs> okay, who made them our communications officer? <laughs> and where are those dashing heroes of ours while this terrible event is going on? Yeah, I mean, don't let the title of the movie interrupt their love triangle. Let them sleep. Let them figure things out. Yeah, sort of a big problem with this, isn't it? I mean, at least with Titanic, whether you like it or not, you see the fictional characters interact with the real-life characters. So when the tragedy happens, you know who they are and can build emotional connections with them. Here, they're in a car away from the base! I mean, okay, a plane fires at them, but we know the ships is where the majority of the attack is gonna take place. And thus, where we're gonna spend most of our time. But they're never on it. So we never make a connection to any of these people dying. Except maybe Cuba Gooding Jr. who had a quick cameo here and there. And yeah, don't get me wrong, it sucks seeing this. It sucks seeing people get killed. But why waste an hour and a half never showing who they are? You wasted it on characters who don't exist, you don't care about, and aren't even in the center of the attack. Yeah, great call on that. But, with that said, I have to admit, the action for the most part is pretty well done. I mean, you can see what's going on, it's intense, and the effects are very impressive. But, even Bay couldn't let this pass without some bullshit moments. For example, Is this guy brushing his teeth? Are you shitting me? Buddy, fuck the plaque buildup! I really hope the military doesn't teach people that when they hear explosions, run out into fire in a bath towel! Oh, and how about this crap where the planes are shown firing on civilians at a hospital, even though it was reported that the Japanese never fired on them? Yeah, even when they had a clear shot, they would not fire at the hospital. Fuck that shit! This is Michael Bay's history! This is Randall Wallace's writing! We have to put Kate Beckinsale in danger from those evil Japs! Who have to fire on hospitals and kill one of those giggling idiots that you barely knew. Oh yeah, I'll miss whatever the hell her name was. Oh, and listen to this. I can't swear. Wait a fuck! You're telling me that a man, a soldier, a sailor in the Navy, on a battle cruiser, can't swim. Okay. Okay, Michael Bay. Okay, Michael, oh, America, fuck yeah, Michael Bay. I do anything for fucking America. I jerk it off until it splooges everywhere. You are making our military look like undisciplined asses. I mean, let me get this straight. They take women up in their planes for joy rides, use cheat sheets to pass their eye exams, which still doesn't make any fucking sense, by the way. 
pull off dangerous ego stroking stunts and yet somehow that gets him promoted continue to brush their teeth even when they're under attack by the way he still has it look he still fucking has it don't go protect another soldier or anything you hold on to that toothbrush private and on top of that you make the accusation that there are soldiers in the military who can't swim you know dick because that's what you are fucking dick when you show this image of the American flag destroyed, you're not just showing your dollar store symbolism that says, ooh, America's hurt, but it's very clear that what is important to you is not how you view America. What is important to you is how others see you viewing America. So, you can make up whatever you want. You can fabricate things. You can lie about history. You can exaggerate. You can glorify. You can demonize. You can distort the facts. You can make up the truth. Make up the truth about people who lost their lives in this great tragedy. Why? Because you're doing it in the name that you fucking love America. I'm sorry, I, I don't fuck around with this shit. I don't, okay? These are people who have lost their lives, people who have been drafted, people who volunteered, people putting their asses on the line, and many of them don't come back. You're taking it upon yourself to show that. And I, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, you're thinking, well, I'll just make up people because they weren't really there, so I can do whatever I want with them. I can make shit up. And uh, granted, you don't deserve the responsibility to show real events. You don't live in the real world. But what happens is that when you take it and base on a real event and you have to show these real people, you have to get it right, Michael Bay. You have to get it right because this, this isn't Transformers, okay? That, that's kid shit. You can do whatever you want. It, it's not The Rock. It's not Sean Connery saying, winners fuck the problem free. No, it's fucking Pearl Harbor. Reality. It actually happened. And I know you're thinking, well, it's Hollywood. We take liberties. Fuck you. It's not Hollywood. When you take it upon yourself to represent something that really happened and is still painful and hurts a lot of people, that means you have to do two things. One, you have to grow up and be an adult. Two, you have to actually represent these people as best as humanly possible. You son of a bitch! I can't be the only one who sees this. And thank God, I wasn't. Don't look at me! I didn't pick the guy! I, I know the movie bombed! All I did was throw money at it! I didn't choose the director! But Peter, I was here in the room when you hired him. I told you, I never heard of the guy! I never heard of Michael Bay! Now get out of here! Go! Go! Get out of here! <laughs> Why, fuck? Why have you forsaken me? <laughs> Your secretary wishes it to be known that there's an offer for free hugs. Send her in. Him. Never mind. What kind of sadistic man is this? Making this pile of crap. That was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, oh my god. god. I can't believe I forced my son to watch it. I will never go see another movie for the rest oh, of my life. Oh, the nerve of this guy. It's just gonna make me fun of it. He should just kill place. himself. Kill himself! So what went wrong, Mr. Bay? I don't know. This was supposed to be my big epic masterpiece, but not only do all the critics hate it, but audiences hate it too. That's real tough, brittle Skittle. That is really tough. All the world hates me, and now I have to carry my burden. Oh. 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 What's that? All the Pearl Harbor DVDs. They suspected that nobody would ever buy one, so they gave them all to me. Would you guys like one? leave you. Goodbye.
truly. This man was the son of Schlock. So President Roosevelt and his rubber double chin plan to fight back and finally enter into war. I'm talking about hitting the heart of Japan the way they have hit us. What you're asking can't be done. Oh no, he is. Oh, oh no, he is. No, no, he can't. He can't. Oh no, you stop right there. You stop right there, Roosevelt. No, you stop. You stop. No, 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 no. No, you can't. Oh, you can't, Roosevelt. Oh my God, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. No, oh, I'm fucking telling no, Roosevelt. Biatch. Do not tell me. It can't be done. That is so damn cliched, but you know what? It's FDR. I'll give it a pass. That is one of the most incredible motherfuckers who ever lived. I, I'm surprised his wheelchair didn't turn to a transformer. Fire consumes the cabinet and his theme song plays him off. It's the one time I want to see Michael Bay go more over the top, I'm not gonna lie. I uh, can't find Danny. Is that why you're here? Oh crap, I forgot about this horse shit. <laughs> There's no more Japanese bomber planes to save me now. Well, you don't have to explain anything to me. I do, because you're acting like I didn't love you. Evelyn, loving you kept me alive. It just didn't keep me from leaving you. But it turns out Kate has an even bigger secret. Rafe, I'm pregnant. I haven't told Danny. I don't want him to know. All he needs to think about is how to do this mission and get back alive. Yes, and as any soldier will tell you, a loving woman by your side, a child on the way, wouldn't be a good motivator at all. You should offer ice cream. Ice cream. So once again, Affleck and Hartnett are assigned together. Awkward. And once again, Doolittle tries to see if he can talk with the animals. I need you for a mission I've been ordered to put together. You know what top secret is? It's not quite as complicated as your million dollar French words, but I think you can deduce what it means. And if it doesn't seem pretty ridiculous asking grown men what words that even a five-year-old would recognize mean, how about asking grown men to listen to a speech that even a five-year-old would write? Oh, and I mean it. Every overused, cliched phrase ever used in a speech is used in this dialogue. Like, this is a dangerous mission. The mission I'm asking you to volunteer for is exceptionally dangerous. Look to the man next to you. He'll be dead. Take a look at the man beside you. You or he will be dead. Victory belongs to those who believe in it the most. Victory belongs to those that believe in it the most. I think these people might disagree, but screw it. And let's end with the most cliched of all, I shit you not, those who are brave enough, step forward. Everyone brave enough to accept this, step forward. Uh, do we honestly have a choice if we've been drafted? Oh. Okay. Look at those brave American men who can do no wrong. Watch as they kill innocent civilians on their dangerous raid. Oh, wait, we're not gonna show that part that really happened? Okay, um, well, in that case, why don't we show you the part that didn't happen? When those evil Japanese fired on our civilians at the hospital. It's true, history's written by the winners. Or people so secure about how good their country is that they have to constantly edit it to remind you how good it is. But after their raid, they crash land in China, where Japanese armies are waiting. This makes Affleck's gun growl. No, really, it growls. <laughs> and Hartnett is shot in the crossfire. Danny, you can't die. You can't die. You know why? Because you're gonna be a father, Danny. You're gonna be a daddy. I was, I was supposed to tell you. Uh, I wish you told me. That would have been a great motivator not to be shot. So Hartnett kicks the bucket, the Chinese come to rescue them, Affleck tells the news to Kate, who takes it pretty well, and I guess her whole role in this movie is just to be told men are dead, and they have their child off screen. Hey Danny, how'd you like to go fly? Yeah, enough of your dead daddy. There's a plane we can fly! Woo! And it doesn't really even end on that big of a note. 
I guess the film knew that most of the audience had to pee or already walked out, so they just sort of slapped the credits over it. And that was... a terrible movie. You know those crappy after-school specials that want to talk to you about drugs but clearly have no idea what they're talking about? That's sort of like Michael Bay in history. If you want to tell a horrible love story, fine, but leave our dead soldiers out of it. Because in the end, it doesn't work as good fiction, and it doesn't work as good history. And honestly, it's just strange that Michael Bay would even try it. I mean, clearly his niche is box office crap, not historical drama. I mean, that's his calling. It's always been his calling. I wonder when he realized that. Hello? Bay, where you been, man? We've been worried sick about you. Tell my I have big boobs. Tina says she has big boobs. Why would that... Forget it, guys. The crowd has spoken. Nobody wants to see what I'm best at. Bitch, that's cracker talk. Maybe the thing you're best at isn't romances or representing history, or any sort of reality for that matter. What are you talking about? The Bay I know didn't give a shit about emotions, or character, or anything like that. The Bay I know pleased the lowest common denominator, and went all the way with it. It's like when we did porn. You just gave the people what they want. Wait a minute, what'd you say? It's like when we did porn, remember? I do. Thank you, dog. You've inspired me once again. Hello? Okay. I'm gonna take a risk on you one more time. Good, because I have a new way to change Hollywood. What? How would you like to get every perverted man-child in the world to see your movie? That's every producer's dream. Well, I think I figured out a way to make it happen. How? Make it all porn. You mean like, big-breasted women everywhere? Uh, no! Well, yes, but go beyond that. Make everything that you shoot in the movie like it's a woman taking her clothes off. I, I don't follow. That chair over there, I can shoot it like it's porn. With low angle shots, slow mos, zoom ins, I can make it look absolutely erotic. Anytime you see an explosion, shoot it like it's porn. Anytime you see an American flag waving, shoot it like it's porn. I bet I can even make the sunset look like it's porn. And lo, I shall call it pornomatography. We shoot everything like it's porn without actually showing porn. We could sell it to the 13 year old demographic. Yes! But how about how it ties it to the story? It doesn't make any logical sense! The world doesn't make any logical sense! The only thing constant is porn. It must be this way. Oh, and one more thing. I require my own crew this time. Mr. Bay, don't you think this much sepia tone will hurt people's eyes? Porn it. Mr. Bay, do you really think we can throw in this many explosions? Porn it. But it goes on forever! Porn it. There's just too much damn slow-mo in this. Porn it. But the people won't watch. Porn it. He's a madman. A madman. Porn it! He has risen. And behold, the second coming of crap. Give not into character. Give not into story. For that leads to art. Give instead unto porn. For porn is everlasting and shall never diminish from the earth. And always remember, if you're going to suck, suck all the way. But I can speculate. I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember? So you don't have to!
They call it an homage, sir. A what? 